On the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit descended, the church was established, and Peter had the opportunity of addressing the crowds of people who were in Jerusalem. He explained to them that the Holy Spirit had come as promised in the Old Testament, and that they were testifying about Jesus of Nazareth, who the authorities had executed on the cross, but God had raised from the dead. And when the people realized that they had killed the Messiah, they asked, What shall we do now? To which Peter responded, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified, and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about three thousand souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And so we find a very powerful day, with 3,000 people, joining the previous 120 disciples. Luke then explains in chapter 3 some detail of what things actually looked like at that particular time. The Christians gathered in the temple for prayer. And so first he presents something that happened obviously fairly soon after the day of Pentecost. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we continue to share these amazing days from Luke chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. A strong theme that Luke presents in his account is the unity of the apostles and of the believers with one accord. And so now we find Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. For the believers gathered in the temple compound to pray. The foundation for unity is to gather around the Lord Jesus Christ in supplication and prayer and worship. As Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, then it will be granted to you. So prayer is fundamental to ministry, and unity is fundamental to ministry. In these days, the Christians used the temple as their meeting place. The authorities were caught off guard with this sudden influx of people gathering together in the name of Jesus in the temple at the hour of prayer 
that is, three o'clock in the afternoon. This is one of the signs and wonders that the apostles performed that God used as a platform to give the apostles an opportunity to speak to the people. As they came into the temple, there was this lame man who sat outside the beautiful gate every day asking alms of those who entered the temple. It was his regular custom to be there. So I gather from that that Peter and John and Jesus and the disciples had walked past this man many, many times. But he had not engaged them and they had not engaged him. But at this time, maybe as they come just as two people walking together, he does engage them. He asks for arms. He asks for a little money. And Peter's response was, look at us. And he looked, expecting to receive something from them. But what did he see? Two men who were as penniless as he was. So Peter says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now this man was not expecting healing. He was just looking for some money to provide some food for the next day. But Peter didn't give him money. Peter gave him a new life. It was within his power to do so. In our society, we have many people begging for money so that they can do whatever they want to do. But Peter engaged with the person and in the name of Jesus Christ sought to resolve this man's problem, addressing not the superficial problem, the lack of money, but the fundamental problem, the inability to walk. And so it is that servants of the Lord don't just send money to other countries, but they go as doctors and nurses, as teachers, as mechanics, as technicians. In many different ways they go. But they go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he might be the glory and that people's lives may be changed and turned around. It involved them personally. Peter took the man by the right hand and lifted him up. So he used his own strength. He didn't just wave at him and say some mystical words. He helped him get to his feet. And as the man responded to Peter's actions, so his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he found he could stand. In fact, he found he could leap and jump and walk. And so he continued with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. He was well known to the people of Jerusalem and the people in the temple. We can surmise that at this point many of the visitors of Jerusalem for Pentecost had gone home and so it was maybe a little bit more normal. Nevertheless, there were plenty of people around and they recognised this man as the one who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple As in some parts of the world today, beggars were just part of the scenery and people were inclined to give them support but not so inclined to engage with them that they might no longer need to beg. And so the crowd were filled with wonder and amazement. This gave Peter yet another opportunity to speak to the people and we'll consider his address next time. But we'll see that it has the same themes as his original address on the day of Pentecost. And so we repeat, the early Christians continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. And so, continuing daily, with one accord, in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, those who are being saved.